Today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs. Okay, defining phrasal verbs, they can be defined syntactically and also semantically. Let's have a look at a syntactic definition or how they are made up syntactically. For example, he passed out is an intransitive phrasal verb. It means to faint, to lose consciousness. This is a phrasal verb made up of a verb past and a part and a particle out. Okay, there you can see the tree diagram. Now we cannot front the particle as this is not possible with phrasal verbs. So you can't say out he passed, at least not with the same meaning. Now, verb, a verb plus adverbial phrase. This is not a phrasal verb. He walked down the road. Okay, also intransitive. And as I said, and I insist, this is not a phrasal verb. This is to contrast phrasal verbs with this kind of verb. This is a verb followed by an adverbial phrase made up of an adverb and a noun phrase, as you can see in the tree, tree diagram. It's not a phrasal verb as we can front the adverb. As you can see, down goes to the front of the sentence. Down the road he walked. Phrasal verb plus object. He turned me on. This is a transitive phrasal verb. To turn someone on is to excite them sexually. This is a phrasal verb made up of a verb turned, an object, and a particle, on. We cannot front the particle on in this sentence. Okay, to contrast that with another type of sentence which is not a phrasal verb, let's have a look at the following example. He turned to me, which means he turned around to face me. This, is, uh, this, uh, this as you can see, has an object, me. And it is not a phrasal verb. Let's have a look. Here we have a verb turned and a preposition to, which is the head of a prepositional phrase to me, as you can see in the tree diagram. We can say to me he turned, although I must admit it does sound a little bit strange. But in other types, in other um, verb phrases of this kind, it, they sound a lot more natural. With separable phrasal verbs, the object can go after the verb plus particle. As you can see, I filled out the form. Okay, as we can see, this is, there's an object here, it's transitive. Or it can go between the verb and the particle. I filled the form out. Both are possible. Warning. Although the object can go before or after the particle in many separable phrasal verbs, the object must go between the verb and the particle if it's a pronoun. We are going to see examples now. I looked the number up in the phone book. I looked up the number in the phone book. I looked it up in the phone book. But you cannot have it the other way around. I'm not going to pronounce this because it's incorrect. Some phrasal verbs with objects are inseparable. I ran into an old friend yesterday. They are looking into the problem. He touched on the subject. He mentioned it briefly. It turned into a butterfly. Many phrasal verbs are made up of a particle plus a preposition. Quirk et al. call them phrasal prepositional verbs. I will not put up with this. He looks down on snobs. It's made up of many components. He gets away with murder. Stand up for what you believe in. Face up to the facts. Some other examples of these verb plus particle plus preposition are 
We'll fix you up with a plumber. I put it down to bad luck. She let you in on a secret. It's not my fault. Don't take it out on me. Who put who put her up to it? Who put her up to it? Semantic definition of phrasal verbs. The meaning of the combination manifestly cannot be predicted from the meaning of the verb proper and particle in isolation, according to Quirk et al. Examples. I bumped into my teacher last night at the cinema. We have bump plus into. You couldn't guess the meaning of bumped into, which means to meet, by just looking at bump or just looking at into. It's the combination that makes this meaning. He ran away from home. The same thing happens. Okay, this is to leave home without your parents' permission. Okay, you can't really guess that from run and from away in isolation. Celsi Murcia and Larson Freeman described three types of phrasal verbs from a semantic viewpoint that is literal, idiomatic and aspectual. Literal, take down the picture. Take the picture down. It's basically literal. You know exactly what they mean. They made it up. This is idiomatic. You don't, can't really guess it. They ate up all the chips and drank up all the beer. This is aspectual. The aspect is uh, finished. It's finished. Phrasal or non-phrasal? Uh, phrasal or non-phrasal? We're talking about inseparable verbs here. We'll look into it. This means investigate. It's an inseparable phrasal verb with an object. She looked into his eyes. This is a verb plus preposition plus object. The difference is the first is semantically opaque. You couldn't really guess that uh, look and into means investigate. You have to learn that. But she looked into his eyes is pretty literal. It's pretty easy to understand what is meant by that. Look into my eyes, for example. Stress and intonation. Uh, particles normally receive stress and the accompanying intonational contour. We worked out the problem. We worked the problem out. He looks out for her. Prepositions are not normally stressed. He looked at me, at, with a schwa, he looked at me. I come from Middlesbrough. They don't work for me. Formal and informal. Traditionally, phrasal verbs have been viewed as being more informal than their single word counterparts. But as formal language becomes more conversational, the difference between formal and informal discourse the differences between formal and informal discourse are becoming increasingly blurred. It's more difficult to decide what is formal and informal. Um, all you have to do is listen to uh, the, the, the way the President of the United States speaks. This one, the last one and the one before. Phrasal verbs. OK, can we put a preposition at the end of a clause? OK. Some say this is not correct, but that is nonsense. Who are you talking to? Where are you from? These are perfectly normal sentences in English. To whom are you talking is very formal. As Churchill Riley said, prepositions at the end of a sentence is something up with which I will not put. OK, here are your references.